Today's show is brought to you by Warnology.com. Your look, your life, your style. Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy Jay. Welcome to Jay's World. So let's talk. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Y'all gonna get enough of letting Kanye West out of the house. Did y'all hear about it? Basically, uh, Kanye West was a uh, special guest. He was actually a replacement guest for another musical artist on this past Saturday's uh, uh, SNL. And uh, they did something different with Kanye. They allowed Kanye to do three songs. Now, I'm a longtime fan of, of Saturday Night Live. And this is very rare for them to allow an artist to do three songs. Usually it's, I, I remember back, 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 way back in the day, in the early days, they would just allow an artist to do, you know, one selection. And then they bumped it up to two. So it was, it's very rare for them to allow an artist to do three songs. Well, I guess they decided, well, you know, uh, what the heck is Kanye West? So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and let, let him do three songs. Now, of course, Kanye West, I believe it was on his third selection that he pretty much just showed his ass, you know, and that's just the only way I can put it. Basically, he came out there once again, caping for Donald Trump. He, uh, he had the red hat on and, you know, at the end of the song, he started ranting and going off, basically telling the audience that backstage they were trying to bully him and, uh, 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 you know, you know, you know, telling him don't come out there with this uh, red cap on. And then he got out there parading up and down the stage telling them that they're going too hard at Donald Trump and be a free thinker and, and uh, lead with your heart and not with your mind and make America great again and all this old, you know, just typical Kanye West stuff that he normally does. You know, and of course, you know, the producers of Saturday Night Live, they're going completely crazy, you know. And now, if you guys try to go back and look at it on, like, say, On Demand, you won't see it. You can pull it up here on YouTube and watch the actual footage because the producers, you know, they decided to, obviously, not to show that, you know. But basically, he was going off about the, the, le the liberal media and all of this other stuff, you know. Just typical Kanye, you know. I'm... <laughs> And that's why I told y'all, you, you guys before, I think in my other video, I'm just, I'm so over Kanye, you know. I used to be a, a longtime fan of Kanye's years ago, but Kanye just makes it hard for you to love him. This brother, I mean, you, you can't. I mean, I, I, I cannot with Kanye now, these days. This is too much. And I find it so ironic. Kanye cl claims to be a free thinker, yet you're caping for Donald Trump and, his, and the Republican Party. That's not free thinking, my brother. You know, you, you are actually trolling people and you are caping for Make America Great Again. What's so free about that thinking? That's not free thinking at all. So I don't know y'all, you know, uh, I'm trying not to make every video about Kanye West and I promise I won't guys, but I'm just, I'm so sick of Kanye West. And who else is sick of Kanye West? And for all of those that are, um, the handful of people that are going out there burning their Nikes because they're so mad at, at Nike because of Kaepernick. Maybe y'all need to set y'all set y'all lighters to uh, some some Yeezys. How about that? You know, set those to fire. You know, I think you're burning the wrong shoe. Okay. Anyway, enough of <laughs> enough of Kanye West and his foolishness. I just want to let, just come in here and let you guys know that. All right, next, I want to talk about Bill Cosby. Now, of course, obviously, you all, we all have heard by now that Bill Cosby has actually been sentenced to prison, and he's actually, he's serving time. So he is currently serving time as I speak. Um, y'all, for years, I've always had a love-hate relationship with Bill Cosby. This is way before any of this stuff had happened. I remember back in the day, well first, let me take it even further back when I was a kid. I was always a fan of, of, of Fat Albert and the Gang, and I still am. You know, I, I love those cartoons. Y'all remember Fat Albert and the Gang, you know, with, with Rudy and, and Fat Albert and his his, his little brother, the, the little wise cat, cracking little brother, you know, always saying, uh, doing the school jokes and everything, you know. <laughs> And I, I, I just, I grew up with that cartoon and that cartoon to this day is still near and dear to my heart. Remember the, um, 
the, the Fed Hour Halloween special. Oh man, that was one of my favorites. And also the, the Fed Hour Christmas special. And you know, so I remember that Bill Cosby. You know, I remember the Bill Cosby from the pudding commercials. And, I, and of course, we all know about Bill Cosby uh, from the, the Cosby Show. And, and I mean, the man, I mean, there are just so many faces of Bill Cosby. He's done so much. You know, you have that Bill Cosby, the entertainer. You have Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby the philanthropist. You know, how he and his wife have, have led the way, uh, given so much money to uh, black colleges. And, and uh, there are so many African Americans that are professionals right now, literally because of Bill and Camille Cosby, because of all that they've done for the black community and black colleges and the money that they've donated. So you have that Bill Cosby. And then, of course, we have the Bill Cosby that was pretty much the rapist. He was the rapist. Uh, he was this uh, a serial cheater on his wife. Um, he did drug a lot of those women. Now. Were all of those women telling the truth? In my opinion, absolutely not. I know right now we are in the, the times of Me Too and all of that's you know, going on as it should, you know, because I think it's a great thing that victims, male and female, victims of uh, sexual harassment, rape, and et cetera, are coming forth. I think that's a great thing. But you guys have got to know everybody is not telling the truth. So I think definitely with the whole Me Too movement, you know, it, it's, 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 it's flawed, you know, it's definitely going to take some work to really weed out the people that are telling the truth and the ones that are just trying to hop on the bandwagon and, you know, so there, there, that's a whole debate into itself because, you know, some people feel that why these women 20, 30, 40 years later coming forth right now when they could have, when they could have said it a, a, a long time ago. Then there's the other side that goes, well, you know, maybe, you know, they, it, it just wasn't the right time for them. Maybe they were afraid. So it, it's, it's, it's a double-edged sword, guys. You know, it's like, you know, you, you feel this way, but then you look at the other side. So the whole thing is just a big old mess. So, you know, uh, shout out to those that are coming forth. But then again, those that are lying, you know, shame on you. So I think the, the whole Me Too movement is something that we, that definitely needs, you know, more investigation. We have to really weed out the kinks in the whole system. But just getting back to Bill Cosby. So, like I said before, there's just many faces of Bill Cosby. And the bottom line is, Bill Cosby, he, he he's doing the time right now. So, there's nothing any of us can do about it. However, with that said, uh, I'm definitely keeping my side eye on the American justice system. Because now that you are, have officially arrested and convicted Bill Cosby and he's serving time. Just make sure that Harvey Weinstein gets the same treatment. We are definitely keeping our side eye on you. So just know that. All right. So that's pretty much all I have to say about that. Okay. All right. So next guys, I want to talk about the 20th anniversary of the miseducation of Lauryn Hill. That's right. Can you guys believe that it has been 20 years, 20 years ago that that album came out? Oh my God. What, that, it's like, that is just amazing. I mean, time is just flying by y'all. I mean, y'all, these years are going like, you know what I mean? It is crazy. Like 20 years ago. Man, when, when I think of that album, I think of, or that CD or whatever you want to call it, I think of where was I during that time. You know, that album is almost one of those uh, milestone events, if you will. You know, it's like you just want to like, I, I remember where I was during that time. I, rem I remember uh, I used to sing with a, a, a gospel group many years ago, and I was ending that whole situation. Um, I was getting into a new relationship, and uh, yeah, so um, what else was I doing during that time? I was uh, changing. Um, I was also in the midst of a career change that was happening with me. Um, just, uh, you know, just, it was just a whole different feel and a whole different time. You know, I, I, I love that CD like many of you all 
probably feel the same way about the, mis the miseducation of Lauryn Hill. Um, Zion is one of my favorite songs. You know, I, I love that. I, it's probably my favorite. Out of all the songs, it's probably Zion is probably my favorite song of the whole entire album. Put that down in the comment section, what your favorite song was from the miseducation of Lauryn Hill. And of course, we were pretty much introduced to Lauryn Hill herself as a solo artist, you know. Uh, I, I, you know what, guys? I have to say, you know, I, I'm i still a fan of Lauryn Hill, and I, I, I love her voice, and I still think she's a beautiful woman. Um, it's not the same Lauryn. <laughs> We're definitely dealing with a different Lauryn Hill right now. She's not that Lauryn from uh, 20 years ago, you know. Lauryn Hill pretty much has not done any has has made really any significant um, mark since uh, the miseducation of Lauryn Hill in the music industry, you know. Um, so, I, I mean, th there's much to be said about the, this new Lauryn Hill, you know. As a matter of fact, Lauryn Hill is actually coming uh, here to St. Louis. She'll be here in concert in November. November, I believe, like November 11th or 15th or something like that. So, uh, I will not be attending that concert. I remember a few months ago I made a, a, a video about Lauryn Hill and I remember saying that Lauryn Hill I feel is just very disrespectful to her audience. I'm not waiting three or four hours for Lauryn Hill to come out on stage. I could care less about what her vibe was and she and she had to be in touch with her chakra and all of this old nonsense. You do not make your fans wait four hours. But for those that want to buy pay pay the price and and and, and wait on Lauryn Hill for four hours, five hours, knock yourself out. I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I just know I'm not waiting for Lauryn Hill. I'm not waiting for Lauryn Hill three or four hours to come out on stage and then scold me. No, that's not happening. You know, I'm sorry for y'all, but Lauryn Hill is disrespectful as hell right now, you know. And, and speaking of, of Lauryn Hill being disrespectful, uh, one of my favorite jazz artists, um, oh gosh, what's his name? Um, my boy, um, oh, it's gonna come to me. What I'll do as I'm speaking, I will put that down, his name in front of me, okay. Well anyway, this guy, he was, uh, he did an interview about Lauryn Hill uh, about a month ago. And he basically tells his story of how how disrespectful Lauren Hill was to her band members and how they had all she pretty much threatened to fire them and and she would change you know change the song set in and, and, and just like that you know on them and 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 she and she had pretty much said that he had to audition for her even though this guy was pretty much a Grammy winner at this point had hit hit had hit songs on the radio and, and hit CDs, but she still wanted him to audition. And I mean, Lauryn Hill is just a trip. So all I'm saying, y'all, in the spirit of the miseducation of Lauryn Hill, I will just always keep the old Lauryn Hill. The, the, the old Lauryn Hill when she used to sing with the Fugees, that Lauryn Hill will stay near and dear to my heart. I cannot deal with this new Lauren Hill. Y'all can have her. Y'all can have her, and y'all can wait three or four hours in concert for her. So, shout out to Lauren Hill. Congratulations on that CD. And once again, 20 years. Hey, you know, congratulations, Lauren. Okay, last but not least, I want to talk about Princess Tiana. That's right, Princess Tiana from the hit uh, Disney cartoon, well, Princess and the Frog. So basically, here's what's going on with that whole situation. Um, there's a new Disney film or, uh, called Wreck-It Ralph that's coming out. They released uh, some of the footage from the new movie, and basically, they have changed Tiana's look. Tiana no longer looks like the beautiful brown-skinned black girl with the uh, full nose and, and full lips um, and the upswept hair. Uh, with the little ringlets on the side. I mean, they the artists have completely changed Tiana. Now, all of the other Disney princesses in the cartoon look the same, but they're pretty much they pretty much whitewashed Tiana. So basically, this new Tiana character, uh, well, she's the same, but this the new look of Tiana is a lighter skinned black girl with the 
thin nose and small lips. And her hair is even different. Her hair is lightly colored with loose curls. And I mean, basically they're, they pretty much whitewashed her, you know. And, and the whole colorism thing within our community is just, uh, it's a very sensitive subject right now. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm with those that are complaining about it, you know, because if all of the other Disney princesses look the same, then I feel that they should definitely have kept Princess Tiana the same. She's a chocolate brown skinned girl with, with uh, full ethnic Afrocentric features. There's no need to change her look, you know. Now granted, yes, in, within our community, there are different beautiful variations of color. We come from ebony, eb ebony black all the way up to the highest of high yellows that you can find in every color in between. We come in a lot of different colors. And of course, that's a whole nother video as to why we come into, into those different colors. But anyway, so I get that, you know, that we do come in different colors, however, if Princess Tiana was looked one way, then they should have kept her look the same way because all the other, like I said before, all the other Disney princesses look the same, so they should have kept Princess Tiana. Well, uh, apparently all of this complaining and everything got to actress Anika Noni Rose. Now, Anika Noni Rose voiced the character of Princess Tiana, and uh, they pretty much based uh, Princess Tiana looks uh, on. Anika, you know, so if you re if you do a side by side of Anika Noni Rose and the, the the actual cartoon character, you will see that they look a lot because they based her looks on Anika Noni Rose. Well, Anika Noni Rose, she um, scheduled a private meeting with Disney and expressed her concerns about it, and she got it switched around. So, I mean, it's going to cost the studio more money to redo certain scenes, you know, within the movie, but oh well. Anika Noni Rose actually told, convinced them and told them that it's not right. You need to change that character back to her original features and the way she always looked. And they listened to Anika, and I'm glad they did that. So shout out to Anika Noni Rose for stepping up and doing the right thing. As an African-American man who loves black women, I can understand how that would be hurtful and disrespectful to, to sisters of color if you see this character in one way and then all of a sudden now she's whitewashed and she's fair skinned with thin with a thin nose and everything. So shout out to you, Nika Noni Rose. I think that is a wonderful thing for you to do. And it was very brave of you to do because after all, this is like Disney, you know. And a lot of people are scared of Disney, but Anika was not. So shout out to Anika. I love you. Anyway, so guys, well, that's it. You guys, please don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Now, y'all, holler at your boy down in the comment section. And for those people that see me out in public and say, oh, I watched your video, but I didn't want to say anything. Okay, fine. If you don't, if you don't want to say anything in the comment section, that's cool. But can you at least hit the like button? Give me a thumbs up, okay? Just let me know. If you love me and you know me, let me know that you care about me by hitting the thumbs up button, okay? I need that, okay? And don't forget to hit that bell down in the corner so you can be down with the notification squad and you can stay current with all of my latest videos. All right, guys, that's it. That's all I got. I will holler at you later. Peace.